So when did you actually find out about the fight? I think it was early December. Uh, I knew about it a little bit before everybody else. And so did Dana call you? How did that man work out? No, um, I actually never have talked to Dana. I only talk to my manager, so I don't talk to the matchmakers or really anybody else as far as that's concerned. Everything is through Monty Cox. Is there someone you preferred to have uh, come out victorious in their fight? In, oh, um, well, you know what? I really do look at it like um, every time that people fight, unless I personally know them, I'm pulling for them, like if they're a wrestler, <laughs> then um, I really just want the best person to come out, you know? But I know my manager was most certainly rooting for Ronda just because of the Olympian Olympian, you know, matchup. It's just, it's very, you know, it's just great for MMA. So, but I, if it wasn't the best, you know, if she wasn't the best, if Misha was actually the better competitor, then I, I like facing the best people. So that's where you get, you know, like, the real glory in your sport. You don't want to beat the people who are, you know, like, not the best. So. And so, have you personally been preparing for Ronda for a while now, kind of knowing that you're going to fight her eventually? Oh, absolutely. Um, I really think it's insane if every other girl in the division hasn't been doing that since, like, 2002. I mean, I just don't see any other way to do sport besides striving to be the best. You know, like, Maybe you are the best and you're a legend like Anderson Silva for a really long time, or, you know, maybe you reach, you know, like a uh, UFC fighter that, you know, like one of the mainstays and just, you know, and fights to compete because you love to do it. But um, for me, I just train to be the best. Do you feel any added pressure, not just for the fight, but for just women in MMA well, on your shoulders? Uh, I never really feel that. Um, I don't know why, but really, I just, I compete for love of the sport, you know, so I just don't put any pressure on myself whatsoever, you know, like, I always go out there and I perform to the best of my ability, and sometimes I've won and sometimes I've lost, and I just really, you know, like, I leave everything out there, so I don't really do it for anybody else, but just personal life satisfaction. What did you learn about Honda and the Misha fight? Um... I learned that they uh, prepared for each other very well. You know, like it looks like both girls made a lot of adjustments from the first fight, and uh, you know, like I think that it was a really good fight. I think it was great for women's MMA. Although I asked you in the other room as well, Misha's strategy. You know, a lot of people thought if you sit there and say I don't think Ronda has endurance, then you should have maybe stuck and move, stuck and move instead of engage yeah. with her from from right at the very beginning. Yeah, I don't. I don't make assumptions that because she hasn't gone past the first round that she can't go past the first round. Like, I thought that that, you know, everyone's like, oh, take her into the second round, as if mystically taking her into the second round was automatically going to make you a winner. And it isn't. Like, that you have to be prepared to win every single round and win every single position of the fight if you want to be the champion. Mm -hmm. So um, I never made that assumption. Now, you've mentioned a lot about different things going on in your life. Uh, we know that you were supposed to fight in August. That didn't happen. Is there anything that you want to tell people, like, people who are concerned, like, what's going on? We, you know, undisclosed reasons she's not going to fight and that kind of thing? No, I like my private life. Yeah. I like things. You know, like, I have so much of my life that has been broadcast over the Internet and stuff yeah. that... Some things I just really wish to keep to myself, and I think that most people can understand that. Well, it's interesting, obviously, I'm a woman myself, you know, when people, when it was, oh, she can't fight, everybody said, oh, she's pregnant. <laughs> so. It doesn't hurt that my significant other keeps posting everywhere, oh, can't do that, it's baby making time and stuff, so everybody starts assuming that. I'm like, are you serious? And he's like, I'm just having fun. You can't play but with that kind of a thing. Yeah. No, I know. Yeah. Like, really? Like, <laughs> that's, that's kind of a scary thing to joke about, really. Yeah, for sure. But, um, no, I absolutely, uh, I want to have another child. Yeah. And it's just one of the things that's very hard whenever you're a woman competing in sports because you have to take a year off, you know. And I'm 33. Taking a year off could be my last year, you know. So um, I think that the time, you know, the time that I really say, okay, I want to have another kid, that's what, that's what I'm going to say, like, that desire is going to win out over MMA right so now. So does that make you happy that you got this huge opportunity, maybe you didn't expect it quite this soon, or, or you know, you're getting it right now? And yeah, um, no, I I knew that I knew it was going to come, come, like, 
fairly yeah. soon, you know, like with Kat being hurt, you know, like it's not like they're going to hold an entire division, you know, like they don't do that even for the champion. They fight interim fights. So I thought, you know, she earned that title fight. Um, but if you're, you're injured and they have other plans and they want more fights, they're going to put the next person in there. They're promoting this fight as Olympian versus Olympian. Talk about the difference between an Olympian a Olympic athlete and just a general MMA fighter. Um, I think that uh, when you've been doing something, and, and it could be that you've been doing MMA for, you know, 15 years, um, you, can, you can compete at such a pace that you really aren't even thinking about what you're doing. Your body and your muscles have, you know, been so long, you know, such, such an ingrained pattern for you to do that really things happen and like some things happen in my wrestling that I literally have to look back and say how did that even happen because your body just does it it doesn't wait for your mind to catch up and process the information and then say to do it because by that time that opportunity is gone so uh, it's kind of like the when like a baseball player can say that they can see the individual threads on a ball thrown at them like you have the capability of doing things at such a higher level and higher pace that it it's different than you know, if you just do this casually or you just do it as a weekend warrior or you just do it, you know, like for less years. Like I literally could not do that six years into my sport. So um, it just brings a different higher level to things. Did you see vulnerability from Rhonda being on her back against Misha and how important is that for you to keep top position? And all her arm bars have been from on top, so not be on your back. Well, um, I think that in every single fight I've ever fought, I typically like to be on top. So that really, like, that doesn't change anything from what I've done from the absolute beginning is to have the fight go to the ground on my terms. So it really doesn't, like, change at all. You know, with all the instinctual, instinctual things you do fighting, but you haven't fought since April, any concern that those things might be a little bit slower? In response? When you've done something for that long, you could wake me up in the middle of the night and tell me to hit something and I would hit it. You know, like it's it's so many years and so much muscle memory that, no, like that's like saying, uh, you know, will this fighter be, if they get injured and they're off, will they come back not being that person? No. I mean, maybe if they just started it and they'd only been doing a skill for a couple months, they might you know, slow down, have, you know, like have to rework some of the things, but I I don't experience that in wrestling and I don't experience it in fighting, so. With the success of Invicta and obviously with two women's weight classes now in the UFC, I'm just curious how you um, have felt the growth of the sport for women in the last year or so. Have you felt it like exponentially get better really fast? You know what I mean? No, I think that these girls were there putting in the work and the time all along. They just needed a platform, you know, and I'm really happy that the UFC recognized those girls and said, we are going to provide that platform to showcase what you've been dedicating yourself to for years. Because it isn't the girls that saw it in the UFC and now decided to do it. Their careers are five or ten years from now. So yeah. the girls that are coming out that are skilled, they've been putting in the time. What's your perspective on MMA becoming an Olympic sport? It's interesting that three Olympians are here, so what do you um, think about that? I do don't you know. think it will become a sport? I mean, it's definitely possible. Uh, you know, like one of the factors that they look at for adding something to the Olympics would be like how many different countries participate in it. And I know that now that they've, you know, started to extend MMA fighting to like a lot of the Asian countries. So I think that will make a stronger bid to be in the Olympics. But um, they look at lots of different factors. Like you have to align your organization with, you know, like the Olympic style testing for, you know, drug testing. And you and there's like a lot of different things that you have to do before they even consider you for that. Two more questions for Sarah. You've been through so much um, in your life, you know, and, and a lot of that's I, I mentioned behind you now. But how has that prepared you for this moment, which is, you know, the biggest fight of, of your life? Um, first off, I'd like to say that considering that I'm still alive, my worst times may not be behind me. And there's no, you know, nobody's promised anything in life. And actually, you're guaranteed that you're going to have losses of people and you're going to have struggle and pain and you have to work through that. But um, that being said, I think that things free me. You know, like, I 
I know what a real bad day is, you know, and it's not losing a competition and it's not, you know, like having a bad practice and it's not, you know, like getting fired even from a job. It's, you know, think life can hand you a lot harder thing than that. So if I know already that the outcome is not going to devastate my life, it makes me so much more excited for everything that's to come. So I can, I really can put myself wholeheartedly into it rather than thinking in my wrestling career sometimes I didn't want to lose. I mean that's a whole lot different fighting, that, you know, doing something that you don't want to lose when then you're purely excited to win. So I think that's affected me. And how old is your daughter? She's four. She's four. So how aware is she of, of what mommy does for a living? And, you know, when you're about to go and compete, does she have any special sort of, you know, message she likes to give you or anything to do to help cheer you on? No, um, she kind of is an, she's aware. And we call it, I'm like, oh, yeah, mommy's going to go compete, you know? Like, I don't really call it fighting. Yeah, because I don't want my daughter thinking, like, oh, we can just go crack people in kindergarten. <laughs> but, um, you know, like... She has an idea because she knows that it's different from watching wrestling every day because my significant other is a head wrestling coach. So she's around the gym all the time and she knows that mommy does punches and stuff like that. So, um, but really like uh, she's not aware when I really go to compete and you know, for a long time I'd like to just keep her, I just like to be mommy to her. But based on your, you've had a long life as an athlete, is that something now that you're in the position of encouraging your own daughter to do that? Would you like her to take an athletic, you know, a pursuit in life? I, I think I would because I think that it's especially important for young girls' self-esteem to be involved in a sport and to pursue goals and to, you know, for a healthy body and a healthy mind. I think athletics is a great avenue for that. But, um... You know, I really think that she can do whichever sport that she wants. I would just support her. And I almost even prefer that she not get into the ones that I've done, like wrestling, you know, jiu-jitsu and, and MMA, just because I might be too tempted to, like, help her and coach her. And I, I think for me it's important to keep all of that separate. And if she does a sport where I can just be her cheerleader and say, I love you, you did great, and I have no idea, like, I think that would be really good. Thank you, guys. 